What's up, Calvary family? This is John, and I'd like to take you on a virtual expedition. So sit back, relax, and right on your couch, we're going to climb Mount Memphis together. If you saw the picture that I opened up this video with, obviously that's not a real picture from Mount Everest. There's no way I'd be there in board shorts and in sandals. That'd be pretty awesome, but pretty crazy. Uh, I did a quick Google search on the equipment you would need to actually go uh, up Mount Everest. And just for boots, 700 some bucks. For a tent, 500 to even $1,000. That's not including specialized equipment like for your shoes, or a pickaxe, or an oxygen mask, an oxygen tank. Not also including a guide to get you there, as I definitely would need one. Now, I'm gonna show you this clip of a real life team um, climbing up Mount Everest, and I want you to take in the sight and sounds as they transverse the mountain. Check it out. an awesome clip. Uh, I was just memorized by the view uh, and also the, the dedication that this team had to go through. But the reason why I want to show you this clip is because uh, as awesome as the climb to Mount Everest is, there's a peak, there's a summit. When you get there, you're excited, you take pictures, you can see all the different flags that people traveled from around the world to, to, to put their country's flag up there. Um, but that's it. After you reach the top, the journey down maybe is not as um, exciting and maybe you're like, oh no, I have to go down now. Uh, but I wanted to, to relate that to a verse that has just been percolating in my head. I, I read it last week in our devotions and one word stood, stood out to me and that's the word strength. I'm going to reread the verses and I want you to zone in on the word strength uh, as I read. This is from Ephesians again, chapter 3, starting in verse um, 17. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and height, and depth, to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. And when I reread that passage over and over again and I, and I was meditating on that, I go, God, why do, we need, why do we need to have strength to comprehend your love? And then instantly this picture of Mount Everest popped in my head. And he's asked, it was as if he was asking me, well, John, why do you need equipment to climb Mount Everest? What strength do you ex uh, uh, expend, expend, expound, use then? Uh, and then I began to research. I'm like, man, there is a lot of time, planning, money, and just overall energy that goes into climbing the tallest mountain in the world. So much resources, so much manpower. And then as you're reading again, and as I was reading again in Ephesians, he talks about how, yeah, to know the depth, the, 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 the breadth, the length, the height. And then he says, that surpasses all knowledge. That God's love, with all your strength, if you were trying to comprehend Today, right now, after this video is over, try to comprehend with all your strength what God's love is like. It would be like climbing Mount Everest, putting all that energy and time in there, getting to the peak and realizing, wait, wait, there's still so much more mountain to climb. We haven't even gotten past the, the very bottom of them. There's so much more, and God's love is so beyond our finding out. 
So when you think about that, every adventure, every journey in life has a summit, has a peak, and has an end cap. And then it's all downhill from there. But God's love for you and me is boundless. It's limitless. You know, if I offered you an all-expense paid trip to Mount Everest with the best guide money could buy, uh, I, I would assume many of you would go. I, I would, watching that video, I was like, I would love to do that. That's like a bucket list kind of, you know, check mark there is if someone offered me to go to Mount Everest and, and, and paid for my expenses and we went with a guide that I knew was safe, sign me up. I'd be all for that. That'd be awesome to see God's creation from the tallest peak in the world. You know, the thing about that is we have God's hand-picked guide to the Father's heart. That came 2,000 years ago in the form of Jesus Christ. And God himself who became man, who paid for your sins and my sins. And he's taking us on the greatest journey we'll ever experience, even more exhilarating than climbing Mount Everest, is a journey to the Father's heart. In a journey that never ends. In fact, I think one of the reasons why we need infinity to be in heaven is because we'll need infinity to experience God's love. And the moments we get to experience here on earth, the moments where we celebrate His death, burial, and resurrection on Good Friday and Easter Sunday, they're just the tip of the iceberg. They're just the beginning of our journey into the depths of God's love. So I hope during this Holy Week that you take time to sit on your couch at home and with all your strength, all your imagination, all your mental fortitude, try to ponder the depths of God's love for you. You won't be able to find the end of it because there is none. I'll see you guys next week.